Praise the Lord. My name is Jonathan Owora. I work with Scripture Union in Northern Uganda. I am married to Faith Irene, and together we have two beautiful girls. I'm very blessed to be part of this program and be able to share with you the Word of God. Before we do that, let's pray. Our Lord and our God, thank you for this opportunity to share your Word. We bless you because you're good. Even as we do this, help us to enjoy the atmosphere of the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, I want to thank the Lord so much for His Word. I will be talking about something. I'll be talking about home. It's a season where most of us are at home. It's a season where we need to know what is home. So we'll be digging into the Word of God to understand what is home. So I'll use the acronym or the abbreviation HOME. H-O-M-E. and -E. Our baseline or our scripture is Luke chapter 2 verse 52. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2 verse 52, And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. That is our baseline. Scripture is important because scripture teaches us to grow and to be more like Jesus. So Jesus grew in wisdom, which is head, in stature, which is physic, phys physical, in favor with men and with God. Praise the Lord. This is good for us to know. So what is home? A home is a place, when we begin with the letter H, a home is a place of hard work. If you are at home, you need to know that hard work is good. If you don't work hard, the Bible tells us we should not eat. Scripture tells us if we don't work, we should not eat. So if you don't work, you should not eat. So a home is a place of hard work. A home is also a place of healing. There are some homes where there's hurting. People are hurting every day. People are crying. People are in pain. But God's design for a home is a place where we should be finding healing. So no matter what you're going through, a home is a place of healing. A home is a place where we find healing from all pain. Could be emotionally, could be physically, whatever pain you're going through. If you're at home, there, sh there should be healing at home. A home is a place of hospitality. A place of hospitality, a place where you feel, you know, when you go to a hotel, for example, you find these ladies at the counter or the gentlemen, they are, they are so hospitable to you. They enjoy taking you around. They welcome you well. They welcome you and take you. They welcome sir, welcome madam. Because you're going to pay them some money. A home is a place of hospitality. The hospitality in a home should be higher than the hospitality we get in a restaurant or the hospitality we get in a hotel. So home is a place of hospitality. A home is a place of healing. A home is a place of hard work. If you're a young man and you're at home and you're not able to clean the compound, then you're not enjoying the home. How can grass grow so tall that you cannot clean, the, they cannot slash it, cannot sweep the compound? You're a young girl, you're at home. You're a young man, you're at home. You wake up and your bed looks like a store. Your, your bedroom looks like a store. Your husband, your wife, and your home looks like a, a garbage pit. A home is a place of hard work, and there should be hard work around there. Letter O, a home is a place of organization. Friends, a home is a place of organization. A home is a place where things must be put and be made organized. A cup should be in a cup stand. A plate should be in a plate stand. Bed sheets should be where they're supposed to be. A home is a place of organization. If a child is not taught how to be organized at home, they will not be organized at school. If a child is not taught organization at home, they will not be organized at their workplace. Scripture says that we must be organized. It's important that we are organized. It's like putting on an underwear on top of trousers. That means you're not organized. Underwear is supposed to be put on inside, not on top of, tr of trousers. That's how organized we should be. When you wake up in the morning, lay your bed. When you wake up in the morning, ensure you've brushed your teeth. How can your teeth smell like a toilet? That means, you know, we have guys whose teeth smell. It's because they were not taught organization at home. My brother, my sister, you're watching this. You need to be organized. You have guys whose toes, whose toes go beyond the socks. 
That means the socks are torn. You need to be organized. We have guys who put on one shirt for a whole week. That's not being organized. How can you have a hole on your shirt and you're comfortable with it? You are not organized. This is important that we know that a home is a place of organization. They say, there's a common saying, charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. You need to be organized. About another, another thing about awe is that a home is a place of obedience. A home is a place of obedience. You must obey. The Bible tells us that children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is good. You need to obey your parents. A home is a place where we obey. Children must obey their parents in the Lord for this is good. You can't come back at 9 o'clock in the night when your father has put rules that should be coming back at 8. A home is a place of obedience. The Bible also tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than to sacrifice. To say, I am cleaning the house, I am mopping the house, I am doing this, and, 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 and I am doing... Uh, no, even if you are doing all those things, you must obey. Your parents, you must obey the Lord Jesus. That is all. M, a home is a place of making. A home is a place where we are made. A home is a place where we are taught well. A home is a place where we are created. A home is a place of making. They make you at home. A home can either make you or break you. If you have a bad home, it breaks you. If you have a good home, it makes you. It makes you a wonderful student at school. It makes, me, it makes you a well-behaved student. It makes you a good husband. It makes you a good wife. It makes you a good cook. My mother taught me how to cook. My father taught me how to cook. They made me a good cook. And I thank God that my wife also is a good cook. But man, if I wasn't a good cook, when my wife is not well, I'm just waiting for the maid to cook. I cook for my wife because I was taught how to cook at home. So a home is a place of making. We make accountants in a home. We make faithful people at home. We make pastors at home. We don't make pastors in theological colleges. We begin from home. Pastors are made at home. It's a place of making. We make pilots at home because they're inspired by their parents to become good people. So a home is a place of making. A home is a place of management. M, we learn to manage things at home. You have a bicycle, manage it well. You have little money, manage it well. Whatever you have, learn to manage it well. Guys, if you do not learn to manage things at home, you'll not be able to manage things elsewhere. If you don't learn to manage things at home, you're able to manage any, anything elsewhere. It's important for you to know that. You're not able to manage your office. You won't be able to manage your relationship. You won't be able to manage your family. You won't be able to manage your education. You won't be able to manage even the little money you have been given. When they send you to the shop to go and buy something, bring the balance. When they send you to go and do something, do it well. When the, your father gives you a motorcycle to go to the shop, ride and manage that motorcycle well. The food in the house must be managed well. A home is a place of management. What we learn from home, we carry to our workplaces. We carry to our families. A home is a place of excellence. That's the last E, the E we have. A home is a place of excellence. Scripture says, and I'll open and read for you, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, it says this, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord, rather than for men. Whatever you get your hands to do, do it with excellence. If it is sweeping, sweep it excellently. If it is mopping, mop excellently. If it is, if it is, if it is singing, sing excellently. If it is washing plates, wash the plates excellently. If you don't wash the plates well, people will get diseases. And the money that would have been used for other things in the home is used for treating the disease that has come into the home. If you're boiling water for drinking, boil it excellently. It's very, if you're slashing the compound, slash it excellently. So a, a home is a place of excellence. And lastly, a home is a place of exemplary living. If you're a good example at home, you're a good example outside. A home is also a place of entertainment. 
<laughs> I like this part because some homes are boring. A home is a place of excitement and entertainment. I, I, I when I was grow- when I'm grow- when I was growing up, my sisters we used to make a lot, we used to make a lot of fun, and we used to laugh and laugh so loud that neighbors would wonder what's happening. But let me tell you, I grew up organized and happy because of the entertainment in the home. You can't be always putting your mouth looking like your your mouth your mouth looks like a gun. Mm. Mm, mm. Mommy comes back. Mm. You, you have like you bring out bullets out of your head. Man, that's dangerous. Put fun. Make fun in the home. Entertain. Make sure you're excited and you bring fun in the home. This is important. This will help us to grow in the ways of Jesus. Jesus had fun. He enjoyed. He brought excitement in the community. He increased in wisdom. He increased physically. He increased in favor with man and with God relationship wise a home is a place of hard work honesty healing hospitality a home is a place of organization and obedience a home is a place of making a place of management a home is a place of excellence a a place of exemplary living and a place of entertainment it's good to be with you thank you so much for listening god bless you